Select Board Health Sewer Commissioner's meeting of August 23rd, 2023, uh, 6 p.m. here in the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Uh, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public are part with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Our dial-in number, toll-free, is 1-800-333, I mean one 833 548 -0276. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580, passcode 570012. And welcome everybody. Um, public comment, I don't see anybody. Moving on, uh, Valerie is doing an inspection at Treehouse, so she'll be here. Okay. Uh, so we'll just jump to Valerie when she comes. They have an event tonight, right? Looks like yes, they have a stuff. concert. So that's yeah. why she's just doing some okay. food vendors. Good. Um, select board uh, reports and announcements. I just want to say that Monday um, there was a farm fundraiser for uh, the damage that July rains caused to the our local farms um, at Berkshire Brewing, and it was really lovely. That's great. We all attended, and then. You know, Kim Driscoll, the lieutenant governor, was here, and she is such a rock star. Yeah. I can't believe she came out. It was wonderful. And our legislative delegation, Natalie and Joe and Jim, Jim McGovern. McGovern, and it was really wonderful. Yeah. So um, I, I, both of you, I know, have uh, events that you had been busy, but I, today, it was Monday, and I got rescheduled for today. I had a good tour with our agricultural resource conservation partners to support our waiver for DEP on impaired waterways to get a 604B grant mm -hmm. and a 319 implementation grant for the whole area of Cumtick Ridge. And so I was really excited. It went really well today. Great. And I know you've had some stuff happening. Uh, well, I was over at the um, senior center tonight. They were doing in that senior center but the riverside park in sunderland and they were doing the um senior center was hosting its annual um car show cruise night they had food trucks and they had a bunch of tables set up with all kinds of uh organizations the veterans and um oh, what a lovely yeah the, um, F, i think it was um frta was there it, i'm almost positive i saw a bus there so they were talking about transportation they had a big car show and uh, they had live bands and it was really good a nice turnout so i got a chance to talk with some seniors there um i just wanted to hit on this real quick because i we didn't have um any uh video last meeting this uh just the deerfield uh, pre-k soccer program um the program will teach the basics of soccer um to uh to children so for ages uh three and four years old and their parents for deerfield residents only 15 slots are available so it's a first come first serve basis this will be monday september 25th october 2nd 9th and 16th so it'll be four times from 5 p.m to 6 p.m at old deerfield baseball fields on 5 and 10 so 50 dollars uh, make check payable to town of deerfield so you can call the recreation department 665 one four oh oh extension one oh seven um and you must pre-register for the program so get the little kitties doing that so um i met with the chief pachorik and jay curtis from the energy committee this morning to talk about um, possible modifications to the hvac um, heating system next door proposal um had a good conversation went up and looked at the various uh, components in, that are involved in the, the, the bid or the, the uh, proposal, design proposal, 
And um, Jay Curtis has followed up from that meeting to contact Train, which is one of the manufacturers who make. Um, so we're looking into the possibility of substituting the same exact size air handler units that have the capability of heating and cooling so that we can use electric heat when it makes sense to do it uh, using heat pumps and have an automatic switch that converts to either gas or oil. Um, we have a dual fuel uh, heating mm -hmm. boiler over there, uh, you know, when it becomes appropriate at a certain temperature. So that's Great. moving along. And um, I think the next step is to just find out from Hessner, the engineering firm that made the design, you know, how much, you know, what would it cost them to, you know, look at the substituting these things because over time certainly would be a great energy savings. And um, there are rebates on the heat pump units that they're not available for the air conditioning units. Right. So we could, with the two units, there's up to $5,000 of savings as I understand it. And, uh, so that hopefully will move forward relatively quickly. Uh, the chief said that we're mostly through the summer, and so this issue is not going to be a, a, an issue again until next spring. Right. Um, one of the concerns that uh, Jay Curtis brought up was that um, the way air conditioning works, it turns on and it turns off, and um, the coils, in order not to create condensation inside the building, the the coils have to stay at a constant temperature. And when it cycles on and off like that, it doesn't. So you get a a, a cold coil becomes warm again, mm -hmm. it, water condenses out of the air, you know, then it turns on again. And uh, so he says, if they switch to this other system, it will remove the humidity from the air much more efficiently than, than what's proposed. So, okay, great. That's great. Uh, great we'll see if Hesner agrees, but um, and Matthew McTeague from Eversource is helping um, with the energy rebate questions. Yeah. So we, we should Great have work. it straightened out soon. And uh, then I also met with Denise Mason today over um, at uh, North Main Street property that uh, the uh, senior, senior housing is looking at possible acquisition. Uh, we weren't able to do the, the, the appraisal visit because of notification issue, but we'll work on that. And okay. uh, we're I'm, hoping I'm to get to call that person to me. Yeah, next Monday or Tuesday, we'll try to, to do a visit yep. with um, the appraiser from FSI. And, Perfect. Uh, Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Board of Health comments. I, I just want to mention that there is an uptick in COVID. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. It just seems like people are getting sick again. Yep. So please wash your hands. Pay attention to who you're hanging out with. We do have some tests here. And from, yeah. from what I understand, they say they're expired on them, but the I think the CDC or the Department of Public Health has extended that. They do still work till the end of the year. To the end of the year. So if you, if you, yeah. you know, we always have a few tests outside the door so you can come in and, and get a test if you, if you or your family needs it. You can always get current ones at CVS, um, but we do have a small supply left here. We do have some masks. Uh, we have some hand sanitizer. So it's definitely creeping up. And then if it's not that, it's, you know, kids are going back to school. You've got, you know, it's like a Petri dish. You know, they all get back together again and the sickness starts. So just basic hygiene is really important. So washing your hands and, you know, putting hand sanitizer on if you feel like you need to wear a mask, that's great too. And stay home if you feel sick. Yes, truthfully. please. please. Um, with the wet weather, like we're supposed to have more rain on Friday all day. Um, the, you know, patrol your yard for mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. I, I, Kevin, uh, we've had so much rain in July. Kevin has been continually treating, uh, throwing out mosquito discs, BTI, mosquito dunks, and um, they seem to be working. Uh, West Nile disease is creeping up the valley, but it is not here from all the testing that we've been doing. Um, and ticks, because of the moisture, um, the ticks have not dried out and and beaten back into the woods right. uh, under the leaves and more moist places because every place is moist. Yep. So watch, do tick checks because, and then we have subsidized testing 
uh, tickreport.com. It's on our webpage, or you can just go direct to tickreport.com. Make sure you put your address in because Deerfield residents get subsidized testing. I've used it. It works great. Uh, I had a tick bite this year and I talked to you and I sent it in and got the discount right off the web page. They, they knew I was in Deerfield when I put my zip code in my address. And so I paid the re, um, reduced price and they did a full battery. I can tell you my tick was very healthy. Um, and luckily I was too. So, and what, what it does is it's a peace of mind. So you don't take uh, antibiotics that you don't, that are not necessary in, yep. in Trevor's case, not necessary, right. but you know, we have an uptick in the other bacterial infections. Lyme disease has been pretty steady at about a third of our ticks. Was that but, a pun? Uptick? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there are other bacterial um, diseases have, have jumped from just 2% um, to now 12 to 13%, depending. So, I mean, that's a huge, huge jump in the last few mm -hmm. years. It is. And so it, it gives us data for your ticks to be tested, but it's also a peace of mind. So please do tick checks. If you find a tick that's been on you for two or three hours, send it in for a tick check. Yep. And Super see, easy to do. Yeah, it really is that easy. Thank you. And we have Valerie here, Thank our you, health ed agent, and um, we're going to talk about uh, food vendor pricing. And um, we've been talking all day when I think we've sort of figured out what we're going to do. So Valerie. Yes. So we're looking at the, the mobile food unit application. I left one in each of the select boards yep. box. Thank you. And if you look at the top, top of that application, it's a little confusing. Plan review fee, $100 for first time applicants. And then the pre-operational inspection fee. $150. So what we decided to do was to eliminate the plan review fee. Okay. That seemed like it was it's cumbersome and unnecessary. And we're going to keep with a $35 inspection fee. I looked at other towns and most other towns are charging a a, a per visit per and per day. Okay. $35, some are 25. So this would be um, a $35 charge for, say you were going to have an event for four days coming up or three days coming up and you had a food truck there. There would be the first, if you've never come to town, you have your annual 150, which covers everything. And then for one year, for, for, one for a year. whole year. Yep, yeah. That's, that's your, your mm -hmm. baseline. And then, and then you have an event coming up you charge thirty five dollars. Is that uh, for a for that event for, uh, up to a four day event? Up to a four day event. And then after that, if it's longer than that, you have another thirty five dollars. Or if for it's another, another four days. or another week from now, there'll be another thirty five dollar each, each event. Correct. That makes sense. At first, I thought it was a lot, but looking at what other towns are charging and to cover our cost to inspect it's important. and for the safety of the food in the residents, I, yep. I think it's worth it. Absolutely. I think that's what we'll do. Yeah. Um, so, and Valerie's going to, um, we'll, we'll keep in touch with Brenda and we'll just make sure that we're covering our costs. Right. This is like we neutral want to cover our costs. revenue for sure. Revenue neutral. Right. We're not trying to make a right. killing. We just want to make sure we're um, covering your time and everybody's and, time to do the and work. And Valerie's done uh you I know lot of inspections. Also, yeah. Yeah. I also gave you um in your packet that I left in your box the number of inspections I've done. Yeah. Yes. And how much money we've taken in in uh temporary food event fees. Yep. Um, it comes to a little over six thousand dollars. Great. That's have great. They, have those all been billed out? Yes. Okay. They they pay they pay pre the when they get they there. Pay. Yeah. When they okay. get submit their application, which you have a copy of the application, they submit the fee with that application, or I or I do collect it on site and turn it into Pat. And um, if we go on if we go online, this will be a little bit more streamlined. Yeah. Just curious on like the the four day event pass. Does that something that they they pay any like thirty five dollar check and that gets passed in or how how does that work? They usually um they'll they'll submit the application that mobile food unit application okay. with their check to mm -hmm. Pat. Okay, so before the event takes place, yeah. And one final question. Um, so Treehouse has a concert on Tuesday night. Then they have a concert on Thursday night. Is that considered one event? 
No, that's two events. Okay. Because so. there may be two different vendors, vendors, food vendors. Right. Well, I wasn't sure yet. If the same food vendor was going to be at the Tuesday and the Thursday show, would that be considered or it's not consecutive? So it's two. Those not consecutive. Okay. So right. that would be two separate events. Yep. Thank you. Great. Good work. Thank you. Yeah, no, okay. I, I really appreciate you sticking around um, so that we can tell you that we're fine with this. So there, okay. there was a report from, I guess, last uh, September 8th, 2021, and then August 2023. Were those just kind of comparisons? Yes. Okay. Wait, what I did was I, I took the report from twenty August 2021 yep. and August of 2023 of what I've done. Great. So you can see what I've done. A serious to uptick past. in work. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. And, and that just shows not necessarily the more work I'm doing, but the uptick in uh, food vendors. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it went from two to 16. That's great. Um, also, um, Valerie is intending to have all the schools done prior to school opening. I did, which notice, is really important. Yeah, I did notice the um, what's not on here is the septic and Title Five. That's probably Dick's doing those. That, yeah. That's Richard. He does. He does that. Um, yeah. I have. I have inspected the eight summer camps. Thank you. Um, and probably I'm going to say the first week schools open. Once they have their food in and are functioning, I'll inspect all the food great. In, in the schools. That'd be great. I noticed else? Greenfield seems to be doing, you know, we've seen a few businesses close down and open back up and they've been, they've been, they've been on it too, which is nice to see. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that people are out there inspecting and it's inconvenient for people that if the business closes for a day, but it's healthier long, long term to have that stuff addressed. Um, so sure. Mm. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, for and thank Thanks you for, for handling it. all our housing complaints too. That's very nice, Valerie. Thank you. Yep. Have thank you. You too. Um, uh, minutes. We have the July six minutes. Let me take a look quick because I and I'll not entertain a motion. Where are they? Why I didn't see them. Um. You, do we have them? Yeah, they're under the. Yeah, they were under the. Uh... It was right after the um, Valerie's piece. Oh, it was okay. Let me just take a quick peek. Oh yeah, can I just look for a sec? Oh sure. So this take your time. Six. Oh right, I was not here that night. Okay, good. Yep. No, All right. I believe, um, I believe that. Um, Do you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of July sixth. July sixth. Yep. yep. And I'll second it. Um, is there any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Kevin McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the sewer treatment plant, South Deerfield sewer treatment plant, second loan. Yeah, we. I don't know if we've got all the paperwork ready. Maybe we we'll just touch base on where we're at so far. No, that's okay. I know we had a meeting this week that um, the finance team talked with USDA on. I know that Casey will give an update on that. Okay. Okay. Would you like the update on the USDA? Order? Yes. Okay. It's kind of part of my report, but let's get that done. Okay, so the financial team met and we met with Trevor and we discussed cash flow considerations and decided that we needed to start coordinating the loan process. We're at the point where we need to borrow. Um, so we had two meetings. We met with our financial advisor, Margaret McLean, and went through some of the items that she's going to need to start communicating with bond counsel. And then we met with USDA a couple hours after that. And essentially, we asked USDA if we could have a close date of September 26th to give time for us to develop the documents that we need because we have several layers of information. We have to get information from town council. The board has to vote and sign the loan resolution, but all of these documents go to their USDA's general counsel for review. Mm -hmm. And that takes a couple of weeks. We also have some vacations in play. So they're fine with that. Um, USDA, the lead uh, loan, I guess he's the loan administrator, uh, Joe Del Beau, Asked, it told me that he's going to look through the documentation, see if there's anything new. 
because this is basically the same documentation as what we did back in April. So what I've been doing is reviewing the loan application documents and starting to prepare them because me, Tellerman and Costa has to do several. I am hoping to have the loan resolution document ready, the draft document ready for you guys to vote at the September 6th meeting. Okay. I wanted to give a little bit of time so we have the right information. Um, and then I'll push out what we need to do for me, Tellerman and Costa and work with Sarah and Brenda for to coordinate with the finance with Margaret's office. Um, there's one question they have in front of us that we're researching. So it's it's a process, but what we're trying to do is get it ready so that we can get it out the door at least for review and coordinate from that that point on because Brenda's going to be on vacation. I'm going to be on vacation and we want to get it closed before anybody else goes on vacation. <laughs> so we wanted to get that done ideally by the end of that, the end of the week. Um, I want to say the week of the 14th, but don't quote mm -hmm. me. It might be the week before that, um, the week after that. So I just wanted you guys to know. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, just hitting on that real quick. Um, we got an email today from DPC, which I'd love to have them send out to Tim and Carolyn too. Um, so we we got really close because we we're trying to use all the money that was appropriated to do all the work that we wanted to do down there. So we were, and then with borrowing costs being higher, DPC um, had offered to waive their seventy four it was seventy four thousand dollar charge for um, project oversights. That was an additional charge that we had because we extended the project to phase two. So we had on site observation and um, coordination, they decided to wipe that bill clean for us. Oh, good. Fantastic. Um, really great news. Just before. they understand the kind of the constraints we're under. Um, we're really close on, you know, getting, um, you know, the cost for borrowing and all that stuff is up. So they just thought it was, um, it was prudent to do that. So. Well, that's wonderful. Wicked, Thank you. Wicked excited. Very happy yeah. for that. Um, it's really you know, nice. Yeah, so very good. So yeah. we'll send that send that through. It's a good good chunk of money back to the town. I'll send it to you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in meetings and trying to finish something up before this meeting today, so I hadn't seen it. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah, sure. And since we're speaking about DPC, I was just curious: um, is that other piece of the Betterment pro project is that going through the legal team or? And uh, Betterments for the old Deerfield plant. Um, DPC did some work in anticipation of coming up with a a, a, a plan for how to assess. It was going to give us a choice, right? Or, or evaluate the and, choices. Um, I think they they had a bill of I think nineteen thousand or something. Yeah. Uh, so just, I didn't know where that was. I was just curious. I think we needed to sign that, vote it at a meeting, and sign it. If, if I'm right about that, and then and then he was going to have the meeting and. Give all let the me check because I honestly yeah. don't remember. I'm so okay. let me just I write myself. When you were out for a week, it I might have it, it might have kind of come in at that yeah. time. But it, thanks, Tim, for reminding. Yeah, I just don't want it to languish. And I I know we want to get that. Yes, sort of organized. Yep. Um, great, great point. Thank you. Yeah. Can I can I just ask about the uh, Weston and Sampson to the peer review? Where are we on that? So we did the. I had council review at Chris L. Um, we had council review the contract. Um, I sent it to Pete. Um, I'm sorry. I sent it to Chris Wester and that was, I wanted to add that to my report and I forgot to do it. Oh, um, well, you can talk about the report. I just, I just, yeah, Tim brought up the betterment thing and then I, I had I, looked at it and then I meant to write it down. I just wanted to make sure we were on that contract that was getting adjusted or something. Right. I think that's the, there was some, yeah. there was, there was some language, language we had to. Yeah. And I, I understood Weston and Sampson's lawyer might have, you know, there might have been a back and forth or maybe they're still going back and forth about, I don't know, liability or lack, you know, but in any case, I, I just wanted to see, see that move forward. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard yeah. back from Chris Wester. I yeah. did send it to him. Sure. So yeah, I sent it on Monday. I think you, uh -huh. met, you mentioned the plan was once we, once we got an acceptable contract that we would then ask DA to. Get them as soon as the, they, as yeah. soon as Weston and Sampson signed it, I'll. Yep. 
I'll okay. get, I, I will actually, that's what I was going to say to you guys is once we get that information back from Weston and Sampson, I'll reach out to Matt Sheehy um, and ask and let them know that the contract's in place and they can, if they would provide the money, that would be great. Yeah, no, that would be great. Okay. I just, I'll do that. I'm sorry to, I no, forgot no, it's, about. Thanks for reminding me because I, well, I didn't to want to forget. I'm, I was worried that if we just went by it without, I'm, as long as we were talking about the sewer, we nope, need to talk good. about it. Um, thank you, Trevor. Mm -hmm. This is pretty exciting. Yeah, it was As great. Get... Great news. Great yeah. news. Yep, very happy for that. Um, next item on the agenda is review of the sewer abatement applications. We have two. Yeah, the, seven. I, those, unless we've gotten any plumbing bills or any. Do we get any plumbing bills? So just to update the board, this unfortunately didn't make it into the packet because I, I just got it from him, but. Uh, okay. Mr. Decker did submit a receipt that I included in the signatures folder. Oh, great. It's, a, it's a Lowe's receipt. Oh, here. Um, but that's that's all. Okay, so we didn't get uh, the one for for the other one. No, Elm Street. Okay. Uh, There's a Lowe's receipt for. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what it is. It's. It must be a part for the toilet, right? I think. Yeah, he had mentioned that it had been a leaking toilet, which yeah. was repaired. Um, yep. It looks like that's what it is, but maybe we can do a little research and figure that yeah. out for next uh, meeting. We, yeah. uh, I was just going to say, yep. let's just sure. put, it, put it off. Yeah, I'm glad that he and, and, brought that in, but I have not seen anything from. And Chris, could you just follow up on the Seven Elm Street Allen. one? So, sure. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll check with. Mr. Bielski. And it, yeah, and just put it on the agenda for next month. I mean, uh, Maybe. yeah, well, it is next month. Yep. September 6th, I guess. Um, next item on the agenda is um, our contract with Universal Electric for the electric vehicle charging station infrastructure. Um, so I can speak a little bit on this one if the board has any thoughts. Um, essentially, this is the contract version of what we've been in the works with them for a couple of months on. Universal Electric is the chosen uh, vendor from the state contract for the installation of the EV charging equipment, both at the Leary lot and at Town Hall. Um, the quotes that are attached to the contract um, list a cost of about 35000 plus, I want to say 200 um, 35000 each right, thirty-five thousand for each site. So the, that's yeah. for the chargers put together. Um, but doing a little bit of math here, and I wish I had put this on a spreadsheet, but I can definitely send it over to you on a spreadsheet if you still want it. Um, thirty-five thousand two twenty is the quote for each one, um, and the combination of the state EVIP funding that we successfully received through that grant, in conjunction with EverSource's abatement amount will bring the cost for each site to just over $6,000. So it is a substantial savings versus if we were to just pay for these chargers completely on our own. Just I'm over $6,000? A little bit over $6,000 for each site. And that will change if there's level three, but right now this is only approval of the level two infrastructure. And, and so we're taking this money out of the ARPA funding or did we have another funding source? Over this, this would be from ARPA. This would okay. Be ARPA. Do we... Um, this so is this is for the level two, right? yeah, right. And do we would we move forward before we know what we're doing, or um, just trying to understand the timing of this? What maybe there's sure doing it now. So yeah, it, it's essentially moving forward with the level two charging equipment, yep. and if we end up getting the level three, um, there will still be um, room to accommodate that as well. Okay. By the time they get in there and start working, I mean, are they doing yes. construction work first before we even tear up anything, or is this just kind of setting the contract in place? This is setting the contract in place um, so that we have that available for when we're ready to put shovels in the ground and yes. don't have to face further delays. Um, Chris, do we still have any update on the um, timing of the level three awards? I have not heard anything. The initial little timeline that I heard. Uh, way back when we applied was August, but it sounded like from my last conversation with John Tortolot at Rivermore that um, as with a lot of federal processes, it's working a little bit slowly. So um, unfortunately, I don't have an expectation on when we can expect that. Well, so it's not changed from like October-ish, right? Is what I had heard last time. Correct. 
Yeah, that would still be probably what I would wager. All right. Um, well, I'll entertain a motion to um, approve these contracts. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the execution of the contract with Universal Electric for electric vehicle charging station infrastructure at Weary Lot and the municipal offices of Conley Street. I'll second for discussion. Um, locations for the town hall would that be right out by the street or are we talking out back or what do we where are we thinking location on those so it's going to be in the side lot just to the west of the building next to where the generator is um, so generally accessible to both employees and the public got it okay that makes sense uh and well and and that makes sense even if we were to I think take this building down and put in senior housing. Would we? St it's still far enough to the side of the lot, right? That we might still be able to use it. Yeah. I mean, based on those other drawings that right that uh, I forget the company BI or something. BHB. BHB put yeah. together. Yeah. Um, that kind of makes sense because they probably wouldn't go that much further, and you could probably still hang on to those. Okay. All right. I feel good about that. Um, and had we settled where those other ones were going to be? I know it was a lot of money to get them one. And there was discussions on where we're well, placing the delivery lot I, or is this. Actually, I, I talked to Gary, you know, on Monday. Mm -hmm. And then he, 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 he wanted him one. He thought it would be productive to have him in on the, you know, this side. Yeah. Before his property. But then we were talking about connecting the parking lot. And so yeah. we decided that we wanted Chris to work with Jeff at um, Berkshire Design and then try to see about where, if there was any other productive site to right. put it. Because okay. he was he was on the fence whether it was going to be really good for his business and have it right next door, mm -hmm. or would it be better to have it further away yeah. Okay. Um, so it's so not he, settled yet where yeah, it's no, going. I just no. didn't know if that affects the cost. Want, of the it's cost. it's going to be in that general area because of the proximity of the pole that's being used. Um, right. But there, there is some flexibility in terms of which side of the parking lot they're on and okay. where they fall in relation to whatever entrance or walkway is going to be eventually connecting the Leary lot with uh, the new location of Gary's Beer Garden. Okay. He, he knew. Um, he knew that it was dependent on the getting the seven hundred and seventy thousand dollar grant and you know all this other stuff playing into you know so he was he was he was pretty relaxed about okay. it yeah. for the most part and um you know he he will be uh, offering an amenity the treehouse already offers you know at their yep. facility so um it will certainly be a good competitive thing for yeah Berkshire yep. brewing yep when when they have their beer garden in open session. Gary has been fantastic to work with throughout this process. He's been very supportive of the process and um, yeah, he's he's been great. And you have the list of the person, the name of the person. Did I give it to you? Yes, yep, you did. Okay, so then we're all set. Um, you can okay. have a conversation with Brett and figure out what's going on. Um, okay. Um, okay. Although, if we're done discussing, mm -hmm. all those in favor? Uh, Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is opening of special town meeting uh, warrant. Uh, move to make a motion to open the warrant for annual uh, for a special town meeting for October. 23rd, 23rd, 23rd at 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock at the Frontier Regional School at, at Auditorium. Frontier Regional School Auditorium. With the intent to close said warrant on September 20, 2023. Thank you. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Uh, we have a second. Wait, oh, I was just going to say. I'll second it. Thank Thanks, you. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I Thank you very much. Then the discussion is so that the warrant's open and we're going to maybe next meeting talk about what goes on it. So if you yeah. want me to give you that now or we can wait till my that's, report, that's yeah. up to you guys. Whatever. You guys, if you want to get through the business to let, my let's, report, let's, I have to Let's do it now because we have um, 
It, there's, I think that um, Nick Mosley from Confidence Analytics thinks he's supposed to dial in at seven. So he's supposed to dial. Yeah, I can do that. So yeah. here's what I anticipate. Um, I anticipate we're going to have, we need to address the opioid stabilization fund. Yeah. And I'm going to check in with council about that. I don't think there's been any movement to change the fact that it has to be a stabilization fund. But I do know that Carolyn had asked us to wait on that because we were hoping they would give us a different type of relief. Well, the one thing I would say is that all, that's all going before the Supreme Court. All That whole settlement with the uh, Sackler. Sackler family, the Supreme Court took it up and put everything on hold. Yeah, but we have other opioid funds. I mean, From we still Sackler have to family? find a way to hold the money. No, I don't think, I think there's... But Sackler's the only fund, I'm pretty sure. I mean, okay. we can do whatever, but I'm just saying don't spend any money yet. Cause... No, I wasn't going to say, what I wanted to do, and this is something they told us we have to do, is set up a fund to hold those mo that money. Yeah. And then we would, so you have to go to a town meeting, create the stabilization fund, then go to town and then ask town meeting to release it if you have an expenditure that you want to use it for. I don't know that we're there yet, right? but we do have to create a place for the funds to live because we aren't allowed to put them in a special revenue fund at this point, And I don't, Carolyn and I had talked about this before. The uh -huh. only relief we had was a stabilization fund, but she had asked me to check periodically. I haven't seen it change though. Well, I haven't seen it changed either. And we actually haven't uh, moved forward in any further discussion with, um, Greenfield, Montague, Sunderland, uh, Shrewsbury, and Levert. Um, we actually have more money coming to us than, like, say, Montague, and then Shrewsbury is not far behind us. Um, so we wanted to pool our money, like I said before, and then try to come up with some really um, useful things that would prevent um addiction from happening or that were effective mm -hmm. and um we haven't been able to um decide what we're going to do because greenfield is the biggest pot it's like right now like a hundred thousand and a year and then ours is like what was ours again i, I want to say it's around 35 but don't yeah worry. it's somewhere something like that and we're like the sec we're behind orange and greenfield so yeah. I mean, that sounds terrible, but I guess, you know, it's based on the number of prescriptions written. Yeah. So we have a pretty substantial amount of money coming over the years. And um, so it is important that we spend it um, in the best way possible. So we're working with Greenfield and our public health nurses, but we haven't really hit on anything yet. We've talked about, what is it, Emily's Watch yeah. or something. Yeah. And there's a few things that we thought might be fairly um good ideas eliza's but, watch yeah and I or think, eliza's watch yeah. sorry i'm yep. sorry and then uh yeah i just check with lisa because i i know that there's way. also new guidance on how you yeah, can use the that, funds because that all like there, i think it's, all those funds are on yeah. hold completely until the supreme court looks at it and that's upset everybody who wanted to use the money who for wanted to use doing it good but i think it was letting the Sackler family off from future lawsuits. And I don't think the Supreme Court, they just wanted to hear the case, I think. So anyway, so um, I don't want to say that we're not working on it, but so that's, we haven't had any anything that hit, hit us right. over the top of our head that was such a good idea. So yeah. we're still searching. Um, so other things. That so other things that you could expect to see, we have two potential bylaw changes. One would be dog licenses and yes. we could potentially see the zoning bylaw submitted for, for approval by town meeting. So if you recall, Peggy Sloan at the COG was working with the planning board to make sure that we capture codif proper codification of the bylaw and include anything that is, that she sees. Updated that they needs an update. Um, I think we could see some inclusions that relate to the floodplain after discussion with her and Denise, mm -hmm. because there's a FEMA requirement that we now have to include. And there's other changes. I haven't looked at it in depth. I thought we did the FEMA uh, requirement. So did, but you might, have to have a floodplain right administrator. Um, <laughs> FEMA is requiring a floodplain administrator. And Peggy explained this to me. It, it doesn't sound like it's a heavy lift and it's something that a town staff person has to be that, okay. has to do those duties. 
So we had, Denise and I had a meeting with Peggy and went over it. Um, but so we could potentially see that. Now, the other thing the board's going to see in front of them is the road acceptance for Greylock and Sugarloaf or right. Greylock and uh, Snowberry Circle. Um, and we, we meaning Chris and I, you have a hearing set um, for September 6th to do the layout. Um, the information's been provided. So we have the layout. The street acceptance schematic is available online. It's, our, it's also available here at the town hall for people to review. Um, because as you know, the first thing we have to go through is the layout hearing. And then we present um, approval by both the planning board and the select board as part of the article or articles. It could end up being two, um, two town meeting for approval. And so far as I know, I've conferred with uh, Kevin on this. Um, not only has planning board accepted the subdivision itself or approved all the elements of it, but Kevin was involved in the entire road building process. And he's anecdotally, he's told me that it meets those specifications. I didn't ask him to talk about this because it wasn't on the agenda, but it was in my report to let you know that these are the sorts of articles you could see. We may also see funding articles. And one thing I think we need to think about, and it came to me in the middle of a meeting this afternoon, um, we probably need to address funding for the MVP now that we have the grant. Um, so we could see, we may have to talk about this. So these are the things you might see in front of you. For plus tomorrow, now that you've opened the warrant, I will send out an email to everybody and let them know if they have articles they need to submit them. So these are the things I know anecdotally maybe, or have notes on. And then maybe any capital or discussions about whatever projects we want to tackle. So my my concern service. about that, it, if we had a bill we had to deal with, if we had MVP was in play, but we didn't know whether, whether we were going to get the grant or not back in April. So I had expected to see this come through if we got the grant now that we have it. It's about $89,000, I think. And Chris can confirm it. I don't remember if I, I didn't write it down in my note, but we can be looking at that. Um, my hesitation about spending any more money is we know we have projects in front of us and we had such a, we have such a tight budget for this year. Um, and this is my thought. You guys are going to do what you want to do and tell me what to do with it. Um, I would limit spending if we can, because in, in spring, in fall and spring, we're going to need to know we're, we may have things in front of us that are bigger yeah. than we thought. And what I'm thinking is more about adjusting some of the stuff we did in the fall with like ARPA or other stuff because we were so freaked out about free cash. And we, you know, now that free cash is at a healthy spot, maybe we adjust how we do that or any of the capital stuff that we've done, um, you know, or anything that we held off on. Um, we, we have to look at that loader issue at some point too, and, you know, either repair it or, um, I know that Kevin's probably been too busy to go get a bid on, you know, the fixing the one that was up there, but um, just look at that kind of stuff. I don't know. We'll and and we can do that. It's yeah. it, the issue is, is capital would have to review all that stuff, yeah. which isn't a problem. I can right. reach out to Mark, yeah. um, but we also need the applications and yeah. it there's still outstanding applications we have to work with. Right. We have to have them approve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll think about so that. So we yeah. need to think about those things. Um, I also have notified Lisa and Dan that you're going to open the warrant that you, I, before the yep. meeting, I sent them an email. Yeah. But I also, Dan that. would like to meet with you. Right. So at one of, uh, Chris, this is for you and I, we need to schedule Dan for a meeting, either the 6th or the 20th. Is it sure. the 20th? Um, to go over the warrant, even a draft copy of the yeah. warrant. That's great. Now That's the closure, if the closure is the 20th, my concern is the zoning bylaw because mm -hmm. we need to post that warrant by yeah, the there's... 6th of October. Right. Um, if we had to post it the 7th, we could, um, but that there's a fine line for the 14 day requirement. Right, exactly. So I've backed, I've, I've walked it back a couple times. Planning board still has to have a hearing on right. the zoning bylaw changes. So I talked to Amy about that. We set up a schedule. I'm going to walk her through that so we get that done. And this is something that's a training exercise. I'm the one in the office that knows the most about it because I had to do it so many times. So I'm going to walk her through it. We've done it before, but I'm going to walk her through it, make sure we're all on the same page so we don't have any issues with the AG's office. Yeah. Um, and then 
they are what we tentatively think in terms of schedule, and she's going to talk to Denise, is they need to have their zoning bylaw hearing, change hearing, the beginning of of October. Yeah. Um, because they won't meet again until September to do a final approval of language, which once we have substantial completion of language, I'm going to talk to Lisa about her reviewing that. If they had minor changes, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But we have to have the language settled in time for the warrant. Right. And if they have a hearing on the second, we don't have a huge amount of time to turn it over. Yeah. Um, I just would, if we could do it the 6th, that would be better. I'm, I'm not going to be here the 20th. I'm going to be oh to talk to Dan. Yeah, I'm going to be um here from I'm going to be in Maine from the 17th through the 20th okay. at that resiliency conference. Oh, so yeah. let's uh, Chris, can we see if we can reach out to Dan and see if he can do it on the sixth? Now we won't okay. substantially complete warrant. We won't, but we'll have an idea. Yeah. Hopefully, a rough idea that gives us two weeks. Yeah. Um, and I hope Dan. Would I'm, be I'm so, with you that. know it's not a big deal. I it's him and. Trevor, we're on the same page. So it's, you know, there's not really any controversies. But in terms of FaceTime, yeah. I think he would appreciate that. So no, yeah, I'm glad. Thank well, you I for just, reaching out to him early. And yeah. Oh, yeah. everybody kind of, I know sometimes yeah. we're like, oh, we forget. And like, there's so much going on or we, you know, or it's just late. And so I'm glad that we, you did that. That's well, awesome. that's why I wanted you to open the appreciate warrant that. so I could start that process. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you very Great much. Work. Yep. Great work. Yeah. And so that's what I see in front of us. I think there's one thing I forgot to write down, but sometimes I, it doesn't make it from the written list to the type list. So, but those are the things I think we could see. Um, okay. If we got um, informationally, if we got um, completed appraisal for um, the North Main Street property that the senior housing is looking at to use CPA funds on, would that be something that might go on the warrant? So a purchase or a, uh, a purchase of the property? Right. Because I mean, we approved at this annual town meeting, approved putting, you know, all that some four hundred and fifty or some odd thousand dollars uh, toward that if it were approved. So but we had to go through the appraisal process. So if that's complete, is that something that could conceivably be? So would you like me to put a placeholder there? Uh, I, um, I think it might be worth considering. For yeah. that property, yeah, I thought moment when they looked at it, like there wasn't enough room to fit anything with the buffer and all that. Or am I wrong? Oh well, no. I mean, you'd have to go through the. That would be for senior housing, you'd have to right? Go through, yeah, you'd have to go through all of the uh, setback through, stuff. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. can build within there. You can yeah. still. Yeah. Oh, okay. it just has to go okay. through conservation commission. Yeah. Um, and then parking planning lot. and and the area. parking's already there, so it's a degraded yeah. site already. Okay. So That's anything great. that they do to improve the degraded site would be a net positive. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. So I just I, I don't know that stuff, and I saw the lines, yeah. and I'm like, oh, it doesn't look like there's anything for anything there. But okay. yeah, right. it's like uh, every house that's on that side of the street or on the other side of the street is within the 200 foot buffer of Bloody Brook, and now some of it's existing, but. Yep. The regulations don't say you can't build it in. It says you have to follow the rules about building yeah. it in. And, and, and yeah. So, okay. And with good. the parking lot there, it's already impervious surface. So, yeah. um, right. okay. Clarification of the proposed dog licensing bylaw amendments. You said that was going on the town meeting, right? Yeah. So theoretically, and Chris can give you a little more background because I wasn't at the meeting. Chris and I talked about this. We watched the, the section of the meeting and it seemed like the board wanted, Chris, please jump into this because I don't want to mess this up. It seemed like there was discussion about. Um, well, it was Tim's idea to have the uh, lesser of a penalty. Right, right. I, I, that part uh, seemed reasonable. So. Yeah, it, was it seemed like a reason much more reasonable. It was reasonable a concern penalty. over so, safety dogs or. or um, it, it, I don't know. Public service. Or... Public service dog. Yeah. yeah. So there is an ADA. There's actually an ADA definition. And I yeah. printed this into yeah. a PDF. It's it actually that. in the statute, Carol. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, so. it's the service dogs are defined under the uh, Americans with Disabilities okay. Act. Mm. And it's, that's captured in 
chapter 10, section 139, which was discussed. That's okay. the yeah. section that mention, also mentions the 70 year old. Right, 70 year older. So it is. it does say ADA. I haven't looked at the ADA definition, but I recall that Carolyn was concerned about that. And well, yeah. Cassie said there was only, I think we have one dog yeah. out of the 800 right. registered. That your your comfort iguana is not. Yeah. We're not just, worried yeah. about. Yeah. That doesn't count. It's right. It's an actual trained dog that has a. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, Chris, yeah, that, I, I was just going to add that's one of those matters that, um, in terms of providing housing, it's frequently an issue where it's very easy to claim that an animal is a service animal without any legitimate proof of it. But in terms of dog licensing, um, it's it, it, there is that ADA definition. Um, the other matter on this that we wanted to touch on was I think there was um confusion over whether or not we are looking to change the numbers but keep this policy in the bylaws or remove it from the bylaws altogether and make it more of a fluid policy and, and I think I right saying that Casey we yes to that's the, the fees, removing the fees, fees from the bylaw. from the bylaws okay. so here's what I did um I sent an, a question to council and I'm, hopefully Chris and I are going to be able to talk to her. We have a meeting scheduled Friday Okay. Um, to find out if we can pull the fees out of the bylaw and make it a working document, like the building fees yeah. and the health yeah. fees, be because great. I think it makes it easier for everybody to deal with. But if there's something in statute that precludes us from doing that, we need Lisa to tell us. Yeah. yeah. Let's so just get that was sort of what we digested, Chris and I, when we good. watched the meeting. Yeah, that's it. I think that you got our intentions. That's good. Um, and we thought that's where you were going, but then yep. we got confused. So we, that's why we asked to have this sure. item on the agenda. Did I miss anything, Chris? No, that pretty much clarifies it. Thank you all for okay. working with us on that. Sounds good. And thanks to him for making sure that we had it on here so we could clarify it. Um, a review and uh, approval of the fees for the townwide tag sale October 7th is the next item on the agenda. I thought we already agreed October 7th and, and no fees. Well, that was the thing. I went back and I checked. We've been charged, except for the year, except for 2020, we've charged fees for that the entire time this has happened. I, I think the intention is not to charge fees. So if that's, that, we've already charged people day. fees that have come in and got Just that taxes. one day. I know, but we've already charged people for that because this is the first time that we've seen you guys say this. So you ha you've charged oh. them before. Really? It's always been the oh, policy was, to charge them. I was going to say, I, I always I was under the impression it was no charge that day. At least that one day was always the No, I mean, that was... Nothing, well, the thing is, is if that's the case, we've already charged people. Yeah. And there's really no way for us to refund money. I will talk to the accountant, but yeah. the issue is, is how many? It's there? always been. I don't know. Um, that's actually All something right. I didn't Let ask Pat that. how many, but she asked me to ask you because this is the first time she's ever heard you guys not charged. And what what is a typical fee? Like ten? It's five dollars. Five dollars. It's five dollars. Um, but there I is would, a cost. They do have hey, to have a permit. I had to pay five dollars to pay play Northfield in a softball <laughs> game, which I you know was sore for the next three days. So uh, you know what. <laughs> I just I got reminds me I forgot to say I don't commiserate with that. I'm dead serious. I I'm, I forgot to bring this up. Uh, Deerfield won. Yes. And yes. we were all know. three of us were there, you. but Tim actually played. Yep. And um he, he, and the money donation that five dollars everyone chipped in from Northfield and Deerfield and chipped in and it went to the South County Senior County, South County, County Senior Center. Center. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. It was, yeah, it was really Thanks, nice. Yeah. But. I couldn't work work in Deerfield. It's a time. It was yeah. actually a really Northfield fun was time. Great. I ran into somebody, oh, at the at the function the other night from Northfield too. And he was just so thankful that we came and played. He would love to have us come and do a yearly kind of thing. And um, just really fun. Event. Well, we they just want to sell hamburgers. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, right. we are going to have uh, Indigenous Persons Day on yeah. October 9th is going to be a golf tournament Oh, um, up there to benefit both the Deerfield and Northfield 350. Oh, fantastic. I'll do that. And they I have a golf. beautiful course, just in case you do. wondered. They oh, do. it's gorgeous. Hey, maybe I'll candy for you. Sounds good. <laughs> Let's do it. So I was going to ask you guys, because Andrea Lamas is the town administrator, she asked yeah. me, um, are, is anybody going to go to the Northfield parade? I would love to if I had something to ride. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to see if we can find you something yes. to ride I, in? Chris, it, ask, I remind me to ask Kevin. What day is okay. that? I don't know what day it's, it is. Chris it's might September. know. In September, I forget what weekend it is. I think it's the 30th. I'm not really sure. But okay. um, I 
want to want to make sure. I mean, we haven't even sent. I sent a. a we need an official thank you note to Saturday the thirtieth. Um, Jeff Hubbard. We never really sent. You know, because you got sick, and we've been all so busy with the road. Oh, to the stuff. about the remember the, we the sent tractor and the oh, driver. Remember the we had sent out Memorial Day, um, thank yous on that mm-hmm. on that heavier duty cardstock. It was just a real simple with our town seal. It was sort of more embossed than just. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a different ink. It was heavier stock paper. It was really nice. I just would really like us to write a thank you note from officially yeah. from the town mm. to Jeff Hubbard because he, he was, was wicked nice, was wicked wonderful. nice. Yeah, and yeah, you know, and, he spent the whole day and yeah, and he even uh, gave uh, you know refreshments to hot and weary. Uh, I know. Yeah. You know, hot and weary officials right? that, that, <laughs> that were we had to decorating modify, walk the parade. <laughs> right. No, we had to modify our, yeah. you know, put a roof over our thing yeah, he was, instead he was of the wonderful. bells. And I mean, nice. I mean, he was wicked nice. If, if there's, I'll drive a, a town pickup truck. I don't care. I'd love to go in that parade. Can you the, drive a stick shift? Yes, I can. Cool. Yeah, I have a mini backwards. if you want to take it. Yeah, I would do the mini. We'll put it. We'll put a little. You can because we it. have stickers. We do. That it's my little. Cool. Well, my husband's mini. Yeah. Um, that was his. That was it's. It's his. You know. I would be happy. Like Bryce's car. That. I would love to be in the parade. So. All right, because I was going to ask. She asked me. Now that I know you guys have actually bonded over the. Yeah. The, no, you know, great. It's just, all of the activities. So I think it would be really time. nice. Yes. Um, I if it is the thirtieth, unfortunately, I'll be driving back from Quebec. But yeah, uh, otherwise, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'd be happy. To I, I'm not really sure what day it is, but I think it Saturday it was, the thirtieth. I think Chris could, ta- could confirm oh, it, it for 30th. us. Um, and if it'll rain again, <laughs> um, if there, Carolyn, if you could send us the information to send that thank you note from the select board, yes, we can do that. Um, make sure that. Whatever, if you send it, send it to both Chris and I, so yes. one of us catches it faster. I, than the I other. will. That was it was it was Jeff Hubbard in Sunderland, and he was just so wicked. I thought nice. I recognized his name. So yeah, okay. I've uh, while we're we've been doing this, I researched the receipt for um, Decker is a replacement toilet that he purchased, and I figured out the abatement, which is three thirteen twenty nine. If you want to prove that or not. Um, why don't we just do that okay. so that we don't right. have that? That yeah. way you have to make it average. All right. All right. All right. All you want to make, yeah, make the motion? Yep. So I'll make a motion to uh, approve an abatement for um, Robert Decker III um, for $313.29. And I'll second that. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Great. Great. Um, next item on the agenda is the tax rate setting timeline discussion. I, you know, because of, you know, all the road damage and cash flow issues and, you know, if we could just get the tax and, you know, rate set so that we can send out tax bills on time, it would be really great. So I just want to make sure the assessors push it's not the assessor really the problem, but it's Patriot, Patriot and they need to be pushed. Patriot and the district. So after that conversation on Monday after Monday evening, I sent Chuck an, e- Chuck an email. He communicated with Karen. She's now communicating with the districts. So we're trying to put ourselves on track to be able to set the tax rate earlier than normal. Um, and so the town accountant and the, and the treasury collector are happy that that communications happened. Yep. And Chuck, if necessary, Chuck and I will circle back around, but I did talk to Karen yesterday. And so she's working to make sure that we have certainly the districts in place. Now she and I didn't talk about Patriot because that the first element was the districts. That seems to be a slowdown sometimes. Um, but that's also a coordination because everybody has to have their tax setting hearing. So I think we're, we've created the communication path. So we're going to try to work on that, Carolyn. Okay, perfect. Um, I really appreciate that. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. mentioned it to Karen on last night, I think. Is that Chuck Shattuck? Called you. Pardon? Chuck Shattuck? Or Chuck yeah, Shattuck. Chuck is the chair right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I didn't want to belabor it much, but I just... Ooh, Nick's we here. Need to, we yeah. need to make sure that... Absolutely, we're on top of that. and we all agree that we need to push this. So and again, you. to Brenda, um, you know, thank you very much for um, getting the free cash certified. Yes, um, you did an I excellent s- job. 
See, Nick is here. So, and perfect. Next item on the agenda is um, our host agreement with um, Confidence Analytics. Hello, Nick. Hey there. Happy to be back. Hey, Nick. How are you? Doing great. How are you? Good. Well, um, I know you've been speaking with Tim. So, um, and Casey, I think. And Casey. Yeah. I sent him an email. Oh, okay. And then Chris sent him an email. Communicating in any case. He's in a different time zone. We don't want to um, wake him up way too early, right, Nick? <laughs> so um, I think what the last com communication we had, Nick, was that uh, you and Casey had through email or whatever had agreed that we would remove this clause and that uh, about being responsible for real estate taxes that uh, are really the responsibility of sunny days. And we did achieve that. We voted on Monday and we signed the contract to, to that effect. Um, we discussed, uh, Casey wasn't aware that you had made a request for an extension of the two year period. There, there, were, there were two periods in this contract. One was five years, right, Trevor? Yes. Yeah. And that was for one, aspect of the thing right and then there was a shorter one for two year two of uh, a termination clause of two years if you haven't gotten up and running by then right. and i think that was your concern because you know sometimes things take longer and um so the reason we have that in in there is that you know just our history of doing this in town we've multiple approvals multiple host community agreements and nothing has happened yet so we were like you know, we want we don't want to hold these licenses out there if no one does anything. We are happy to extend that at any time. I think we already extended it for uh, sunny, sunny days, days yeah. just because we we understand construction issues, whatever. And you're relying on the site to be ready, and then you're relying on builders, you're relying on weather, all that. We're totally fine as long as we see movement going forward. We're totally fine for an extension at any time. Yeah, and I think there so, might uh, be. We a just need forty eight hours. Yeah. To post the meeting, and we can vote to do that. It's, it's honestly no issues. Yeah, we have no issue with that at all. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Tom had explained, or, or excuse me, Tim had explained that to me yep. and uh, makes total sense. And, right. And that, that's, yeah, we're happy to oblige. Perfect. Yeah, so I think that that's pretty much, other than you're going to your board and getting signed off, that's, we're, we're, I, we're all in a good spot now, right? You think so? Yep, I think we're in a good spot. Wonderful. Great. We're thank excited you. to have we're, you coming. We're really excited. Thank you all. Yeah, we're very excited. Yeah. Thank Can't you. Wait. Can't wait. Yeah. Really appreciate Thanks, Nick. It. And, uh, Nick, just a uh, real quick question <laughs> off topic. Um, do you know of another testing facility outside of um, Boston area? There's nothing in Western Mass, is there? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Right. I didn't think so either. So that's, that's, that's the, I mean, we're really we'll excited about that for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Yep. Take care, Nick. Thanks. Thanks. You too. Bye. Thanks. Um, next item on the agenda is a letter of support. I, I don't think I sent it to you, did I? I don't think so. Um, I, I Chris, just did. You get a letter of support that Carolyn had sent. I, we. It was just voted on. The final draft was voted on Monday, and um, so I had that on Monday. Then um, the New England Association of Conservation Districts voted it. And then yesterday at our Massachusetts Association of Conservation Districts, we voted to send a support letter based on the New England, I mean, the Northeast Association of Conservation Districts. So I will send you the template tomorrow. But basically, it's just saying that, you know, um, the area in New England has um, received tremendous damage because of the rains in July, and that we are urging, you know, the congressional delegation, whoever, um, it, to support uh, funding the emergency watershed protection program because there's going to be considerable um, losses that will be, uh, um, and, and we're trying to get the letter in. So um, the New England. I mean, the Northeast, I keep saying New England, N Northeast gr group has voted that. So that's Virginia, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York, and the New England states, and then Massachusetts. And so I'm hoping to get the towns to do 
you know, that were affected like Conway and, and Williamsburg and Deerfield to send in letters to our delegation so that they'll have two or three letters saying, you know, get on your, get on the stick, make sure you fund this program. I, um, and the reason why is even though I was just up to Pine Nook today, like I said, for the um, tour, uh, you know, for the 6 OB, you know, to get impaired water um, designation, I, I feel like probably Pine Nook isn't going to be worth doing because so much has been done already. Mm -hmm. But I mean, really, the road needs to be done and all the sewer stuff. Yeah, but that's not. Yeah, that's not. Uh, that's under the stuff. brick grant. Correct. That's under the hazardous mitigation grant or the 604B, whatever. It's not going to be under the EWP program. However, Little Meadow Road remains under the EWP program for sure. And I did talk to um, Ben Clark, and he's going to track down somebody in the fire department probably Jeff Belanger to, to go out and take pictures, you know, kayak out there and, and take pictures and see how much the road is actually undermined so we can send it to NRCS. But Darren Davis, the, our state engineer was in Texas all week. So um, I haven't really gotten any more information until next week as, as to how they're moving on our projects. But um, we have the two spots on River Road that potentially are EWP and Little Meadow Road for sure. Mm -hmm. And those are mo both multi-million dollar fixes. Carolyn, so I'm, I'm just curious, and I, I don't have a strong opinion about this, but when we were out on Pine Nook with, with Darren, um, he seemed to think that there was work that they could do. Now, I, I understand that there's a lot of riprap in there, but that's not the same thing as hardening the inside of the Eagle Brook uh, waterway so that it won't, you know, the next time a storm comes down there, it might erode the, the land on the side that's where the school is, but it won't damage the road. So have you and Darren already made a determination? That you, no, or is no, it just no, you I, thinking that there's a lot of riprap and therefore there's no I, work for EWP to do? I'm I'm not I I feel like there could be I mean we were talking several hundred thousand dollars right but we've already put several hundred dollars into the just so we could get the road open right so I'm not sure if there there I would say go forward with the EWP if we're in the fifty thousand dollar plus range but I'm not sure if we have fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff in there because left. I mean, that's why I wanted Darren well, to look at it. Yeah, I guess, you know, between engineering and determining what needs to go in there, um, it could easily easily be, you know, several hundred thousand dollars of work if they decide that it's worth doing. And I think Eagle Brook should have some input into whether they want to harden that going forward, even before we do all the complete the bricks or the hazardous mitigation just, right. just because that takes a, you know, that takes one of the, it defines the roadway and it, you know, so I, they may decide they don't want to, but I just want well, I just, we didn't know I don't want to was... give it up unilaterally. Oh, no, no, yeah. no. I just was saying it's, in my mind, it's a little questionable now because there's so much, we have done so much work up right. there. Right, right. Um, but Little Matter Road for sure is going to yep. happen. And we're hoping, Kevin and I are hoping. River Road. River Road. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because that, that. You know, Darren has been out there. That, Darren was out there in July of 21. when We had the, all that rainstorm and we had that damage in the same, basically the same area. And he felt it wasn't, it didn't really qualify enough because it wasn't enough regular water. I mean, it wasn't like a stream. A regular stream and but it's more damaged and and we've had more substantial yeah water coming on a regular basis so uh, he's trying to help us out yeah he's trying to make it he's yeah. trying to make it happen yeah so, i mean i i guess i would just say let the engineer tell us that it does you know I right know it doesn't oh I, yeah. yeah i'm absolutely i just that's why i was waiting for darren yeah there we he has an assistant but um, I've worked with Darren well, yeah. since 
eight, 2018. So I feel like, yeah, you have a level of comfort that yeah, the decision gets made is the right one. And he, and he, he wants, he wants to help us. Yeah. So I feel like it's worth waiting till next week till he comes back in yeah. state to um, evaluate Pine Nook. But I, I have to say there's so much work done up in Pine Nook. It's questionable. Okay. So it, would you all feel comfortable if we were able to send a letter? Would you vote a letter of support for the EWP program to yes. our legislative delegates? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So um, I would Sentence. make a motion to work with Casey and Chris to come up with a support letter um, from us and that we could use our signatures, um, sure. electronic signatures to yep. um, send that to our legislative del motion. delegation. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. He seconded really, really quietly. Yeah, no, I heard him. I just, I was gonna say. Uh, well, I, I just think it's important that we get this moving. Sure, absolutely. Um, I don't want to, and I, the latest update I've heard on, um, uh, you know, the Zoom call that I was on with, uh, well, um, that um, Veronique had with her, um, you know, about her issues too, was that it, it, they're hoping to have a number, you know, something to the governor in November. So that means we might have numbers in October. Yeah. Although we won't see the num money until like November. North but, Andover got hammered hard. Too. Yes. I know that um, Senate leaders, Philco was there and a lot of, you know, a lot of I people called, were I there called, to help. Um, Thank you for and, doing that said you know could we work together yeah. you know combine our forces did you have they have they don't have any numbers yet because right. they, they also have flood yeah. Yeah. yeah they had a lot of flood insurance yeah. involved and you can't count that so right. um probably yeah. they're going to have a declaration a because population and they have a lot of political right. clout is yeah. the issue <laughs> yes and so i right. yes and so i asked them if we could work together you, and can make you put us underneath your Coat. Right. Yes. <laughs> I, a lot. I said that Deerfield and and Conway and Williamsburg had you know suffered quite yeah. a lot of damage um, in the July events, and that we had three separate events, and that we didn't qualify for anything, and we certainly wanted to make sure that we worked together. And, yeah. And I, I I just am so thankful for uh, Natalie Blay and Joe Comerford and um, and. and um, McGovern, Jim McGovern, that were here on, on Monday and all recognize the impact that our farmers had and they recognize also how much the state, you know, our local government has been whacked. And I know that they're going to do everything they can to help us. And I have no doubt about that. They're, they're, they're working they're really hard. People yeah. are working hard and they, they recognize the issue and they want to help. So I'm thankful for yep. that. You know what though bugs me? I, I will have to say this. This really bugs me. And um, and Chris Larrabee, it's please, it's a scandal if you want to write an article about it. But everyone keeps, I mean, Jim McGovern asked on Monday night, he says, Well, what about the IRA money? And I'm like, we, we don't know that. where it is. I yeah. said, we've we been trying to track it, it, track it down. And yep. I said, this is what happened to the ARPA money. The ARPA money came into the state and it disappeared. And well, luckily. And I Some mean, of it was geared to the to the town. No, that was a that went to the towns on right. purpose. No, but I meant the, the state. Other, I know got all that money. Yes, we never really saw it, and I, now now this it, inflation but... reduction money. They everyone keeps saying nine billion dollars. Nine billion dollars came in the state. That's what Marky said uh, when he was here visiting at E. LeBrook. He says, "Well, you know, track down, you know, get that nine million nine billion dollars that came in." And then you could fit McGovern. nine billion dollars in this building. Crickets. If it was in hundred dollar bills, you couldn't fit it in this building. And crickets from the state. Money. We have not heard from them. Yeah, but to Jim, your point, Jim it's McGovern very frustrating. said the same thing. He says, Well, yes. what about that nine billion dollars right. that came into Massachusetts? And I was like, Well, we can't seem to find it. So there's, I wonder what the advocate advocacy path is. There's got to be a way to. Well, everyone that. keeps saying the money's coming. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. And I think and we're hearing about it, you know, when I go to my conservation, mm -hmm. you know, state meetings or the regional meetings, they all talk about the extra money coming into the state, but it hasn't come into our state yet. And it hasn't come in to the, to the feds yet, you know, the, like the NRCS level yet, they're anticipating it. Right. 
and they may be coming up. So remember when they did ARPA, they, they went through this whole rules process. They may be doing the same thing where yeah, they identify that was rules for our money. But where did that money that went to the state go? That's it. That may be what the state is evaluating. Um, CARES Act money, they went through a similar process where they decided, you know, they had to go through an evaluation process, come up with ways to spend it, you know, what what was allowable, what wasn't. But that also came from the federal government. There well, may be an element of that it, going on. It's interesting because I just did a quick back of the napkin calculation that if $9 billion in IRA money came to the state and there's, I, I rounded up to 7 million residents in the state, um, that if it was allocated per capita, we would be looking at getting $6.7 million in IRA money. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that you, we will never figure out <laughs> where that money went and how much we got. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have to say, I agree. And that's why it's so crazy. And it's not the fault of our local legislators. No, it's not. We at just want to clarify at that, all. you know. There's They're a process that the hard. state goes through. Well, just as hard. I mean, and they don't know. No. Nope. Because I ask, I mean, I ask all staff persons yeah. all the time. You and I both, Trevor, I think we talked to the AG about uh, where is this money? And and even she can't get answers. Right. Right. So. Well, she's getting a lot of pushback on doing an audit of the state house. So I don't right. know. Right. We'll exactly. Well. Maybe she's trying to figure it out. Yeah. But. I do anyway, think that we have a voice. There's people working. I'm to help thrilled us. that we have a great delegation. Our delegation is amazing for us and working yeah. hard. There's and they're good at working with their other their other yeah. people, like Senator Stoka, for instance. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. They've I love been her. Great. Yeah. And I also wanted to say, in addition to the Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll being here, Ashley Randall, our own Deerfield resident, former resident, yeah, uh, was was at this thing on Monday night. She's working hard for us and Kristen yeah. Al Alico yeah, who works for wonderful. Governor Healy out of Northampton we, is we, you know we, we have seen Kristen yeah. so much. Yeah. I, I mean She's I've never wonderful. seen what a difference uh, one election makes. I, yes. I know I've never seen a governor's rep like her. She's amazing. She's always in town. I wish I could have I wish I could have seen her. She just yeah. they impressed me so much. Yeah. No, I they listen. We have a we have a voice and I feel like they're listening. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I absolutely agree. And um so anyway, but I just wanted to say that it really did bug me that Jim McGovern said the exact same words that Marky said. Well, what about that nine billion? I'm like, well, what about it? We can't, we don't even know where it is. <laughs> so anyway. So what are the other things we have tonight? That's oh, Chris was gonna give us a, a update of the Leary lot, which really didn't well um happen on just, Monday. I, I think I messaged that um Jeff um Squire just apologized yes. for family emergency. Yeah, he had a family emergency. Yeah. So we'll we'll be here. Like I said, I think the 13th we're trying for, right, Chris? I think. Yeah. Yes. The but, Wednesday, the 13th. It's an yeah. off week, so it's gonna be an extra meeting, but uh same place, same time. He said he'd do whatever it takes to get here to do that. So um so I just want to give an update on that. So we'll Okay. Yeah. Um we um because of uh we we had no EM, South County EMS meeting okay because of covid issues so um our next meeting is september 7th so we can put that back on the agenda um this mail that, this mail yeah i just wanted to go over you know i know that there's been a lot of concern over the um well you get texas governor sending migrants all over the world um on florida's dime for some reason i don't know but we, I guess there's a lot of um, uh, immigrants coming to the area, possibly, or at least to Massachusetts. So it looks like there was a press release kind of put out about what to do, um, you know, and if we have any shelters, we have no shelters in Deerfield, really. But um, so that was some interesting information, uh, state of emergency to try and deal with the amount of um, migrants kind of coming to Massachusetts. So uh i don't know what we have to do with that really but just to be aware of it help where we can um and then i noticed that there's a is that an appeal of the dog decision yes there has been an appeal file um okay. council is preparing documentation for us and we won't have a we date on that yet we don't have to, we're just I waiting think, for i think we have to answer to it the way i understand it from council he's yep. going to advise me of what else we need to do 
All right. All right. Yeah, it looks like it says that the attorneys for the parties involved. Right. Have it's to usually they, they handle it. Yeah. Okay. That's my understanding from Matt. Yep. Great. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to talk well, about? On a, well, we have administrative report or assistant town administrative report. Yeah, Casey, oh. do you want? There's one. There's a couple other things I wanted to mention. So in that USDA meeting on um, Tuesday, we also discussed release of the grant funds because we're at the the point where we could start claim once we close the loan, the second loan, we can start claiming the grant funds. Yes. And USDA mentioned they might want to do this in a more expedited manner. So it may be that we get more, we might ha have to do monthly requests. We may be able to obtain those funds quicker. Okay. So do perfect let Great. fewer requests. So the accountant, DPC, and USDA are going to sort of coordinate that. Right. Um, there's also been, and this is something I think Trevor can speak to. I believe there's a question and it came through DPC, but release of retain a substantial amount of the retainage because yep. we're at, and this confused me, partial substantial completion. <laughs> yeah. And so USDA recognizes that phase one is we would want to release a portion of the retainage that only that leaves us 10% left over yep. to get to the final completion of the project. Right. So uh, Justin Skelly from DPC and uh, Brenda Hill, our accountant, are going to work to make sure that we address that yeah. in I, in an upcoming bills payable warrant. Yep. I don't know if it's going to be this one or the one after, but um, that will be addressed just so you know. Yeah. So we're we're there. And I wanted maybe to ask you if there's something that's related to that. It's that really phase one is, is done. It is pretty about, much is. And um, so phase two is the aeration tanks. And there really isn't much, um, you know, usually we're hanging on to retainage for like big equipment or something. It's really cement rebar is really what's left to raise the walls of the other clarifier and do the um do the other things. We procured most of the stuff. Um, so there really isn't anything left to hold on to that large amount of retainer for retainage from Waterline. So Josh, Josh from Waterline had requested that we hold on to whatever we think we need, maybe a hundred thousand dollars or something that might be left over. Um, but to you know to come up with a, a figure between DPC and and um, whatever DPC thinks we should hang on to for retainage just right. in case something, you know, we need some money back on something. But I think we're pretty close. And Brenda thought that's not an issue at no, all. No, it's we not an issue. And that's what I wanted the board to know is it's not an issue for Brenda. It's yeah. a question of just processing the bills. Yeah. Um, so she'll be working on the next warrant. She goes on vacation next week. Yep. She'll be working on that warrant um, Monday. She'll be finalizing it Monday. And then she leaves on Tuesday and she won't be back for two weeks. Um, I'll be on vacation between the 11th and the 16th. And this had been planned for a while. And I realized that. No, that's fine. The, the, I, I just, yeah. I realized that me being sick sort of interrupted a lot of things, right. but the, um, that, I, I already paid for my place. I, the, <laughs> um, you should go definitely relax. <laughs> for the sewer project, phase one is just about done, substantially complete. Phase two, and they've started up machines all of that. So they've uh, phase two um, is scheduled to be done in April. Yes. They will actually be done in uh, December. They're hoping to be done by this winter and be out of here, but they will then um, come back in the spring to pave, rake out lawns, right. you know, finish touch up finish stuff. Up. The finish, that finishing the work. Stuff, but uh, the majority of the major Construction will be done before um, the end of December, I think. So that's that's, really that's what they're hoping for. Yeah, that's pretty exactly. exciting. Now, Trevor, I I know I'm not remembering this correctly, but I remember at one point we we wanted to make sure we spent everything we needed to spend so we could get all the grant money. Yes. Um, and I, as I always do, I raise the question: Well, what about solar panels on the? Yes. So yep. I did talk. I did talk to them about that too. Um, they don't have enough money in there to do that, but they probably could if you want. Um, what they were going to do is see could they could the roof support it because there's that southern roof, yeah. and it's something we should look at doing. He said he's open to looking that looking at that if, mm -hmm. if we wanted to. Um, I don't think we have spots on the ground yeah. enough space on the ground, but certainly on that roof and maybe the the flat roof, we could always put a structure up there. I would, yeah. I would think that's strong enough to do something, but. Um, 
the, the building you're talking about is the new one. It's the, a new the big processing building, building. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, facing south. It's yeah. got all that roof yeah. and, ability. And I would be surprised and shocked if it wasn't structurally strong. Oh, I'm enough. sure it. I'm sure um, it is. Because, yeah. you know, it's got to be better than a house. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's strong. Yeah, so I don't see why it couldn't happen. I mean, we just have to decide what I, we want I, to spend you know money on it. I was just going to say, if there's not enough money, then I would want to support putting additional money in from this town meeting mm -hmm. towards because that's operational yeah that's going to cut the, the long-term cost savings and i think that they're maybe we do it maybe we do it after the fact right maybe we hire a, a, a separate pv square yeah, or northeast solar i agree and, because they're now they're now allowing municipalities to work with yeah. solar installers the solar installers can get the 30 percent credits correct and they just transfer it to the 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 town essentially yeah. gets the credit, but it goes to the the, to the installer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that oh, was one so of the schemes that we talked about for the church, where Northeast Solar gave us the yeah. you know, preliminary, just so we could understand. Right. So that could be a, a another way to approach it. I, I kind of feel like that. Like, yeah. uh, don't get Waterline involved in all of that. Yeah. Like, let them finish up in an honor roll, yeah. and we say, hey, let's put a, yeah. put I, a I system think it, on that. I we think it's absolutely crazy not to do it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. then your your operational costs are hugely reduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know. Um, I mean, that's one of our yeah. bigger users. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's a direct less electrical. now. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, um, I, speaking of which, I just got my uh, my electrical bill with my 41 panels on my house, and it's a negative $1,000. Fantastic. And. You know, we still got September is a is a good production month. And you, you really don't have a lot of sun. I mean, you do, but you've got trees around. It's not well, like you're in the middle of a field. No, fortunately, the the the, the house is higher up than than and oh, okay. trees are far enough away. Yeah, I do get some blockage, but but uh, my God, I mean, it's not like you're in the middle of an yeah. open field and you get. And that I do much. have an electric car, and I do yeah. have an electric heat pump. So you're water heat. all that stuff. And yeah, you do, I mean, and charging all that air conditioning. In the winter, it'll disappear <laughs> for sure. But still, I mean, you're not paying three hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. So. And my yeah. So the payoff periods for these things are, you know, really quick. Five years. I mean, yeah. And in, in, that building is in a better spot. It is. You know, no, so that's no wide trees. open. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, yeah, I I, I, I feel like that. I'll, something yep. that we need to do okay yeah sounds good um now this the application for appointments to boards i just i don't know if you were looking for feedback i think this is excellent i'm really excited about it oh, I didn't see the it. Yeah. Well, the only thing that i saw think was missing was we didn't have the human rights committee on it it's advisory the, committee advisory yeah. committee the human rights advisory committee yeah we can make that correction when we first developed this that was still in flux yeah and it was actually chris that de I know. developed it so i want to make sure he gets the credit yeah. um, thanks chris. Here. Yeah. sure i totally didn't plagiarize it yeah um, <laughs> it's fine that's what i don't we, believe it's you called, it's actually called cribbing yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but we that's, share <laughs> if you if something somebody has some why reinvent the wheel if somebody has something that's very successful yeah. exactly. but it looks really good then we just copy it yep. um, so, feelings exactly i was bragging during our interviews with potential candidates for some town employment that we always said thank you and praise people for things immediately so thank you chris <laughs> You're very welcome. I appreciate that. Um, so is there any items that are unanticipated? I say one thing. Sure. I wanted to give a shout out to Lori McComb over at SCEMS. She yes. got a grant and I think it's 48 that I don't have the number in front of me. But it was a grant for um, the cardiac monitors and yep. she, it's over $48,000 and it was a great effort on her part. And I congratulate her. It's going to help us save the budget a bit. And so she's communicated that we received the notice. She's communicated with Brenda. So she's going to work with Brenda on that. Um, and the other thing was the, um, that's really good because yeah. we had zeroed out almost the capital. Right. Fund. So it's really going to be helpful. And I think she did yeah. a great job. She worked really hard on that. Um, is there anything you wanted to add Chris in terms of an assistant town administrator work? Sure. I mean, I did write up a brief ATA report for the week. Um, I don't know if you wanted me to go through that item by item, but sure. Okay. Um, I guess just to start with a brief Leary lot update, like I usually do. Um, there's not much, as you know, there was that fiasco of a meeting Monday that, yeah, we all know how that turned out. Uh, it's going to be rescheduled for September 13th at 6 p.m. Um, I did have a meeting with 
Berkshire Design, along with representatives from Berkshire Brewing and Hampshaw Lumber last week that I thought went extremely well. Oh, great. Um, it was about the planned development on both of their abutting properties. We managed to obtain blueprints from Hamshaw for what they're planning to do on their parcel, which is oh, a great. huge help to Jeff and his team. Yeah. Um, Berkshire Brewing, they don't have concrete drawings in place yet, but he's definitely communicating um, kind of what his ideas are and is a little bit flexible in terms of how his beer garden is going to look in terms of where it meets the lot. So right. that's going great. A couple of other items to touch on. So email issues. I've been going on and on about these for months, and we think we finally got them fixed. As of last Friday, uh, Entree was able to work with an outside vendor. They shut down our email service for a couple minutes, and it seems like whatever the issue was that was deep in our settings that is way above any of our pay grades to figure out, they were able to get their best workers on and get that resolved finally. And people that we've been struggling to reach for months are finally getting all of the emails we've sent them that have been lost in cyberspace. So that is great news. and. That's going to be a huge help. Um, there are a couple of outstanding email issues. Like I know you had mentioned to me, Carolyn, um, I'm, I'm trying say, with them. <laughs> yeah, I still can't get into my email. We're, we're probably going to have to have you bring the um, computer down at some point. Um, maybe, okay. maybe we'll make an appointment with them, but we can talk about that tomorrow. Um, in terms of cybersecurity, I've been looking at different ways because it, it's, it's something that's been kind of top of mind recently. Um, and I've been examining the ways that we can improve our organization-wide cybersecurity. Um, there are a lot of digital threats that have been threatening environments like ours. Municipalities are a really attractive target to a lot of cyber criminals. Um, through some networking and former workplaces and other municipal professionals I know, I've gotten good word about the uh, Municipal Cybersecurity Awareness Grant Program, and that offers from my understanding, free support for local government efforts um, to offer cybersecurity training to their employees, which is a fantastic prospect that I think we're definitely in need of. Um, unfortunately, I don't know when the next grant cycle opens for that, but it is an annual program that I think, and don't quote me here, but I think it's in the next uh, fiscal uh, 24 budget as well. So we'll see when that opens up and I'll keep close tabs on that. Chris, um, we have Homeland Security has um, that I sit on the a municipal rep on for the Western Mass region. Mm -hmm. We have cybersecurity um, uh, programs as well. Oh, that's fantastic. I'll have to look yeah, into those. Casey, Casey is, uh, originally started out. We were a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, so you can talk to Casey about that. But it coordinates with the state, the new state cybersecurity department it's a brand new department and that's what these grants that you're talking about mm -hmm. but it is also under the homeland security program so there is a, a little bit of um inner inner um connection fantastic i definitely want to look into that because yeah we're in need of it and it's a threat that's not going away anytime soon yeah so the planning and economic development coordinator, as Tim had referred to, um, we have been in the midst of interviews for that, and we're optimistic about presenting a strong candidate pool to the whole select board. Uh, South County EMS chief, we continue to receive applications for that and hope to get moving on that pretty soon. Um, flood recovery. So I, myself and Casey, we got an email, a very nice email from Representative Blay earlier this week um, about loans that are being offered by Greenfield Savings Bank. Uh, they're low interest 3.99% five-year loans to individuals in Deerfield who have been impacted by the recent weather. Um, there are a couple of contact in contact phone numbers that we encourage residents who might be interested in those to reach out to. They are on the town website on the main page. Um, and the last thing that I had was something that Casey had already referred to, but it's the Snowberry Circle and Greylock Lane Street Acceptance, which the layout hearing is scheduled, was in the paper today for Wednesday, September 6th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Great. Carolyn, there's one other item that's on the agenda, and I, I apologize. It didn't make it into the packet, but it's actually the um, SCEMS chief job description. Okay. okay. Which reflects the discussion personnel board had. Uh, they approved the job description as presented by Tim. Um, so that's the draft that really is what Tim had presented and sent to them. And so we had, we discussed it with them. The board also needs to approve it. 
Um, and if you what wanted was, to wait on it, anything major change from the no? Well, no. well, it clarifies that it's a working yes position yep. and the uh, hours that the boo wanted and to it's see. A minute, minimum of sixteen hours. Okay. On the, oh, on the truck. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's been okay. formatted to meet the same formatting um, structure that we have. And this is what the Board of Oversight. That's what the personnel board. Does. Yeah. And, and what about the Board of Oversight? Are they good with us? Yeah, mm -hmm. we we approved it. And the thing was essentially we didn't alter it except for the there it clarified. I I, I worked with Tim Drumgool on on a couple of things. Uh, this is a working chief position and it specifies the hours. And then there was um also, um, some addition to like promotes positive relations with all external public safety agencies. But essentially, this was the 2021 um, description approved by the personnel uh, yeah. board, and okay, uh, we wanted to try and limit the amount of things that changed just so that we could smooth the process and move forward. Yeah, because it's such an important yeah, position. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, um, I just want to reiterate that. Um, Tim Drumgool is doing a fantastic That's job right. he is. Um, as he interim is. director. And um, I really want to uh, say to everyone at SCEMS, the, you know, people are stepping up and doing the work uh, that's getting done. I, I just, it's been wonderful. I was at the senior cruise night tonight and um, I'm not sure how SCEMS came up, but something came up and Anybody that was in the circle just saying crazes about yes. how they've been taken care of when, you know, they've fallen or something like that. Yes. Um, the level of professionalism from the uh, paramedics that arrive and the care they receive yeah. um, is just top notch. And we're so grateful for South County EMS. We're it's very lucky. And I can tell you that personal so, experience. Yep. Yep. They're just great, great. So Couldn't be happier. We do you do i i make like a motion to approve yeah I would you have to, actually seen this yeah we've heard you saw this about. several weeks yeah. ago yeah. i'd like to make a motion to approve the uh job description for the chief of the south county ems uh operation as written i'll second motion um if there's no further discussion all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn s i thank Great. you what i what i would like i mean it's, I don't, we've already voted what i'd love to see is um if somehow in in the uh, culture of, of South County EMS, there is time to do training of like, I would love for them to He's come. He's the guy to tell. Host a, <laughs> host a training here for like how to run the, um, or, you know, we just talked about the EADs, um, the defibrillators, um, looking in to try and get getting one up at the transfer station if we can, but just training on that stuff, a CPR class or like, Anything for our police officers to make sure that they're up to speed? Like, we yeah, always had know, that vision of like, would, could they do public? That was things? the intent. It was that the was intent. the intent. I, I, um, the EMS used to do the same thing. I'm not sure that they we're necessarily talking about the same trainings, but I know yep. that, um, and we we can certainly revisit this with Tim and the uh, person who becomes the chief. Uh, there was some changes in state and regulations about training who, could or who can train and what they can train about yeah. but some of these other things like simple defibrillator training yeah. they they might be something that could be just a, be handled yeah right. not a certified course right. or anything but yeah. just hey you know just just for your knowledge in case somebody drops in front of you this is what you do you know uh yeah. here's a machine and this is how you would do it safely um I'm putting it down right now yeah, so still, I don't forget. That'd be great to bring it up. So yeah, yeah. Tim or Carolyn could bring that up. We okay. can, sir. So, so, you know, I can certainly mention it to Tim. When, I'll see him tomorrow. When, when I was on that board of oversight a couple of years ago, I mean, that was the intent as we were building this thing. And I mean, it was I was way after the fact, but we'd always talked about that, and it never really seemed to happen. I know they get busy and there's all that stuff, but if there's a way to work with, you know, chief and our um, emergency management director and just kind of those little things would make the community feel really good. And I would feel certainly would help if somebody has an employees. And, you know, and, and our town nurse may yeah. know how to use exactly. this, but, but like a refresher even, course, even, yeah, you know, for sure. Just little, yeah, little yeah, knowledge yeah. of things have changed and Hey, this is what's new. This is what we're right. seeing out there. So that'd be great. Good work, everyone. Thank okay. you. All right, I'll take a, if there's nothing else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. 
Sherilyn McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I.